essentially, Maria and I are working through some numbers on a contract that uh, it's a couple contracts that she's awarded this week, some soul source stuff. And um, Jody, what's up? And so we're just going through the numbers together. And I thought, eh, why not jump online and uh, share with everybody? So we're just, we're going we're gonna to basically continue our exercise um, at the meantime while everybody can join in and watch and see what we're doing. So Maria just got two contracts yesterday, Monday. Friday? And, yeah, Friday, Friday and Monday. Friday. Okay. All right. Cool. So um, feel free to watch. Feel free to ask questions. We're going to just, I mean, it's, I don't know how exciting it's going to be. We're talking about numbers. We're looking at Excel spreadsheets. We're doing some math. What's up, Teddy? So we're going to, we were talking and I was like, all right, let's just jump on and and talk with some people. So, all right, let's go back to share. <clears throat> okay, so now I can see my screen. All right, cool. Dun, dun, dun. All right, <clears throat> now. Yeah, Jody, uh, Maria's work has come from the same people, yeah. But she's gonna, she's now gonna start expanding. So, because she's, she's she wants to go bigger. <laughs> yes. She wants to go bigger. My numbers are still small. Yes. All right. So let's. Uh, so what we're looking at is essentially what what happens is um, we're getting ready to prepare a subcontract agreement, and and preparing a subcontract agreement, what we're doing is depending on the type of work it is depends on how much work has to be performed. So what Maria and I are doing is she just won these contracts, right? So one's $22,000, one is $16,000. And what we're looking at is how much work does the actual prime contractor so have to do? So we, we went over here and we looked at the limitations on subcontracting. And it says that general construction, they have to do 15%. Specialty rate is 25%. Now, just before the call, Marie, she said, how do I go ahead? Ask me a question. So first we had done the numbers and then they came up with the fact that the prime has to do a certain percentage because I'm technically the sub. So my question is like, how do you know what percentage they have to perform? That was the first one followed by how do you figure out like his numbers are his numbers. I am not the brightest when it comes to numbers. So he was trying to explain explain to me how the percentage of the FAR rule pertains to the numbers. Okay, cool. All right, so now do you have the contract? Because we need to know, so to determine whether it's general or specialty rate, I'll show you real quick. So let me pull up. I'll show you. So we'll go pull up the size standards table and under construction, Bum, bum, bum. Construction two, three, six. Okay. So here, Maria, see right here? Yes. Subcontractor, specialty trade contractors. Okay. So if your NAX go for your contract is in a two, three, eight number, then you're a specialty trade. Falls on one of these two, three, six numbers, two, three, seven, which is a higher dollar amount. Then your general construction. So when we're looking okay. at this, that it should be on my contract. What next? It code should be code? somewhere in a contract. Yeah, on the where you signed it at. It should be in that contract. I'm gonna buy, while you're checking. I'm gonna check the YouTube video. What's up, Mo from DC? Good job, Jody. Congratulations, Jody. We gotta get you on here to talk. 
Uh, Mo, what's up, brother? Hey, man, we're we're trying to do good stuff. What's up, DJ from Atlanta, David? I don't see it. Look on the. Did you see where he signed the signature box? Yes. Okay, look at like look in that on that page where the signature box is. It should tell you where RFP is, the number, and all that kind of stuff. It should tell you. It should say the next code. Hmm. It just says okay. This one is two three six two two zero. All right. So now. 236220, right? So that means general construction. So on that one, all we gotta do is 15% of the contract. Now, which which one is that? Which dollar amount? The 16,000. Okay, so this one, so all we need to do is 15% for the prime. So that's 2,400. Now, what about the $22,000 one? That's the one I'm looking for. <clears throat> there are two different papers. There are two different forms, looking forms, okay. which is funny because they're the same award. More. Oh, this one says negotiated. Oh, nice. That's Very exciting. Nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So for everyone that's just joining in, it's coming on board, what we're doing, Maria and I were just going back and forth. Like I said, she had uh, two sole source contracts. One was negotiated. And we are determining what percentage uh, that the prime must perform of the contract and what percentage uh, that she have to perform as the sub. So depending upon, it's, they're both construction, but here we are looking at the limitations on subcontracting under the FAR provision. And what it says essentially is general construction, they must do 15% of work. Construction by special rate contract is 25% of the work. You come over to the size standard table, the specialty trade contractors are here. They fall under subsector 238. And that's how you figure out essentially whether you have to do 15 or 25%. And again, we want to be compliant, right? We don't want to trigger any alarms and we want to continue getting contracts. So I have a question. <clears throat> sure. Does the percentage of work work in every industry? As a what? Like every industry has to have a percentage. Of yes. Work. Oh, yeah. So would everything else fall? Oh, but this is just for construction. No, no. See, look at number one, services. The number two is supplies. Oh, so if it's IT, they have to do 50% of the work? If, if it's a service contract, they have to do 50% of the work. Okay, the second one, I don't see the number anywhere. Nope, no number. No number? Mm -mm. Now, the second one's the bigger one. So I'm going to assume the second one is probably the same as the first. But we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to make sure. Okay. So let's look at it. <clears throat> okay. So here you go. So that is the percent of work that needs to be performed by the prime. Right? Okay. All right. So where, okay, the numbers make sense. Okay, got it. Okay. So now where do you, you said they have to perform that amount of the contract, but how do you determine that's the amount they, they did? Um, because essentially they can't, so they, they can't pay out. So this, if they pay out more than this amount to subcontractors, then they have violated the clause. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. So when they go out and let's say someone's looking at their books and they wrote, say, $20,000 out to, to subs or to a main sub, right, then they didn't meet the 15% requirement. Oh. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> now, again, when it comes to the profit and everything, it doesn't matter because all we have to do, right, is essentially what we'll do is they have to just do some of the work. So if there's some materials they need to buy, if there's some dumpsters they need to rent, whatever that case may be, um, then they can pay it directly. And that will count towards their percentage. So it, all it is, it just depends on where the, you know, um, they, they're going to have to actually, you know, spend money to, to, do, to make up to this number. Okay. So, so for example, like in your case, I know you got to rent some dump dumpsters. Yes. You got to rent the materials to pick up the floors, like to clean the floors. Yeah. The stripper thing. Stripper stuff. So he needs to rent that stuff. So he would need to rent that equipment. He need to buy the dumpsters. What else do you have? Um, the the drywall and studs for the walls. He needs to pay for that. And but then that would get him up to his uh, percentage of work. Okay. Makes sense. So in the subcontractor agreement, you just change the numbers around again? Yeah, what we'll do, yeah, you'll change around. So uh, what you would do, right, in the agreement would be you would exclude those from your contract and they would fall into his contract. So then now he would be the one responsible for those items and purchasing them. And then that would be excluded from your contract. And then you put the money onto his side. Oh, okay. So yeah. like $600, take it out of the big number and put it onto his. Right, right. Okay. Makes sense? A little. Well, that's why we're here. What, what's the problem? Linda! Look at Linda. Welcome, Linda. <laughs> yes, we have, we have the next code, Linda. Thanks, she finished it. So yes. Linda has to perform depending on the, her next code. Yeah. yeah, 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 of course. Okay. All right, what else? So at the end of the day, he just can't pay out more than 19000 and that's how it's determined. Plus the percent, right. So exactly. He, yeah, exactly. Because that would, then he would have, he can't pay out more than that to subcontractors. He can spend it in materials and equipment, things like that. But he can't, he can't pay that out to subcontractors because he has to be, when you get a contract, you have to be responsible for completing a certain percent of the work. Who checks this? You could be audited. Oh. So um, they have, uh, what's that group that audits? You see them on TV all the time. They audit. I forgot the name of that group. But you see them on TV. They audit. Uh, what is it? Like the GAO or something like that. But they, they can audit you for it. So you want to just keep clean books, keep clean records in case anything happens. By the way, guys, I'm learning business one-on-one -on -one with this Excel number breakdown thing. We were doing numbers yesterday and it was harsh for me. Like he's trying to tell me not to use my calculator all the time. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so for, again, anyone coming on board, I see we've got people watching now. Essentially, uh, what, you know, Maria has a couple contracts that she was awarded. And we want to make sure she stays compliant. She's putting together the subcontract agreement forms. So this is more advanced level stuff for people who have not quite got there yet. But um, nevertheless, uh, what happens is we have to make sure that the prime contractor is meeting the limitations of subcontracting here, right? So we want to follow the FAR guidelines. And I'm sure if Maria looks at her contract, it'll say, It'll reference this FAR clause 52.219-14 somewhere. And effectively, she's got a, she's doing construction. So she the prime has to do either 15 or 25% of the work. On one of the contracts, we determined that it was general construction, right? Based on looking yeah, here. It says my FAR table. Did you find the FAR clause? FAR clauses by reference. Yeah. 252. Dot 219-7009, which is section 8A direct award. Yep. And look for 52.219-14. 
And then it says regulations at 13 CFR 124.515. Listen, I don't need to hear them all. <laughs> I don't know where they are. But that's it. They're in there. But he did send me um, an attachment with okay. other stuff. Okay. All right. So we're, uh, um, anyway, we just decided to come on and share. So we just decided to come on and share. That's all. So if you guys have questions, now you have an answer. Because I had no, because I know a lot of people ask me, like, what per, can I just sub everything out? Right. So this is your right here. You know, I'm going to, matter of fact, I'm going to put this in the chat. So everyone can have it and they can reference it. So no, you know, you can't, and again, particularly, um, so this talks about the clause part, multiple work contracts when set aside for small business concerns or 8A, this clause does not apply to unrestricted. So again, if it's an unrestricted contract, this doesn't matter, but most of us are dealing with small business type contracts. Uh, in Maria's case, this is what applies, so real life situations that we're going through. All right, what else? Um, what else did we talk about yesterday? For us? Not yesterday, we're talking about today. No, yes, but this, are we, when we were doing our numbers yesterday. Well, the numbers we're looking at, the profit and all that kind of stuff. And, but what do you have, what about this particular scenario that we? I think mine was just that, like how do you determine how, where your numbers came from and then going between how do you prove it oh well again i mean if they go back in the audit your books and you show that you wrote up nineteen thousand dollars to subcontractors then you you know more than that then you didn't perform 15 percent of the work okie dokie so i mean if you go back and you say on this job i spent eighteen thousand on subs then you're compliant mm-hmm Right. And you can show that the rest of the money uh, came into your organization. OK, so he can't even pay the subs directly. No, because, again, that would be again, be paying the subs. You can't have to perform a certain. This is for self-performing work. Yeah. See. Perf or performed by the offeror contractor. So the prime. Yeah. This is no, you can't. It doesn't matter if he pay if there's five subs, <laughs> he still can't sub out more than this percent of the work. Doesn't matter the number, just the, it's it's the dollar amount, the threshold. So that's your answer, everybody. When you call me and say, <laughs> "Can can I just be? I'm new. I have no past performance. Can I just win a contract and sub everything out?" The answer is no. Well, okay. So there is uh there is one exemption. Now they're doing something that's called simulated, similar situated entities, right? So there's this rule now where they've called similar situated entities. And again, this is a little bit more advanced, but with a similar situated entity, if you find another uh, entity that's the same small business size, small business concern, then you could they could count towards your percentage goals. Um, you lost me. Yeah, it's a little bit more advanced. Because you're saying if they're the same thing as me. For example, in your case, right, if this is an 8A contract, if you found another 8A small business, then the, the percentages, they could help you meet that 15% goal. But what if it's a regular contract, just a small business set aside? Can, can... So again, similar situated entities means that the entity has to be the same as, as the contract. So if it's small business, then they have to be small business. If it's hub zone, it has to be hub zone. So it's the same. That's why it'd be similarly situated. <laughs> well, so that makes it easier. So yes, right. you can sub everything out if it's just a small business set aside. To, but it would have to be to another small business. Right. Well, yeah, I guess because of all of my subcontractors. Oh, look who we pull up, Coprints. <laughs> I guess because all my subcontractors are small businesses. Yeah, but 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 again, you're um, 
if it's an 8A, they would have to be an 8A. Or if it's hub zone, it have to be hub zone or service disabled, which makes it a little bit more challenging. Yes, Alexis, these new things can be challenging because remember guys, I came from no business background, like nothing whatsoever. I thought even getting a business name was like out far reach for any person until I discovered all you have to do is go to SunBiz and register and poof, you're there. So numbers definitely confuse me. I am not a numbers person. All right. So that would be the only exemption to that. But again, most of the people, I think, where they're at is, you know, just trying to figure out how to get their feet wet. So this doesn't apply. Yes, but I, like I'm asking just because I get that a lot. A lot of people want oh, to come into the space and that's the first thing they, they ask me. It's like, oh, I don't do, let's say, landscaping, but can I just get this contract and sub it out? to a landscaping. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. And again, for, and and when you talk about landscaping, right? So that's a services contract. So you gotta do 50% of the work on that, which is, that could be tough. Um, okay, so by the way, someone thinks someone, Jordan, Superman Jordan asked, what's the, uh, a book on bidding? What I would say, Jordan, I actually just interviewed a guest yesterday uh, for the podcast. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we talked about is if you don't know how to price your job or bid your job, probably it would be best to work with a company who has experience in that so that you can learn how to price and bid a job because there's estimating is more of an art than a science. So there's, so to learn how to estimate and, and price jobs is really uh, challenging for people. And so I would say definitely you want to, that's something that you want to do, uh, learn from an actual company who has experience. It's hard for me uh, to teach someone how to estimate, because again, uh, there's so many facets of contracting, right? There's like, like, okay, so you're in the municipal trash industry. Um, Jody's doing construction. I'm doing construction. Linda is doing IT services. Some other people are doing uh, software development. Other people are providing uh, FTEs to the government. So there's just so many aspects of pricing that if you don't understand your numbers and how to price it, it's going to be really difficult to compete, um, you know, with other people who are really good at this stuff. There, obviously, there's ways to learning it, but I think probably the best way would be to work with a company who has that expertise and has that experience and then learn how they price their numbers, right? So get some of that knowledge from them. Yeah, 1099. Uh, so, oh, Mo, welcome to the show today. Awesome. I, you know, by the way, I'm so happy that that we've got people here at 1.30 in the afternoon. So <laughs> that's great. Because, you know, I, I joke with Maria about going live in the middle of the day. And it seems like it, it's probably a good response. Now, someone had another question before I get to Mo. Queen of Zion. I, and I keep forgetting who that is, that Queen of Zion person. She's out of Texas. Oh, okay. All right. So let me, well, let me first do this. Let me stop sharing because this is very confusing for me seeing that screen with all the windows through it at the same time now uh queen of zion so true keeping the books right is a must yes exactly correct keeping the books is a must i agree two thousand percent um there is an imi spreadsheet for that type of listing can't you make a list to show your payroll in hours yeah, Queen of Zion, it's, it wasn't a matter of showing the payroll and the hours. What we were doing is, in our particular case, uh, you know, we have a company that essentially, um, they're not going to be performing much work, but we still want to keep them compliant. So yeah, so the, the, on this particular project, the majority of the work is specialty trade type of work. So for example, we have certain people that are going to come in and do the carpet. We've got certain people that are going to come in and do the doors, things like that. So in that particular case, how do we remain compliant when essentially, you know, we're basically hired, you know, we're going to be subbing out the majority of the work. How do we still remain compliant in this contract? And so that it wasn't a matter of just keeping, um, you know, showing the payroll in the hours because a lot of these guys, like they, we hire them for what we call one-off projects. So we hire them for a, like a one-time project. And then like then next time we need a door replaced, then we call them for the door. 
Like, and that's kind of the way construction works, right? You don't you don't put someone on your payroll that we're not hiring handyman. We're hiring people that are like specialists at this stuff. Um, so definitely that's that's kind of the situation we're in. Dun, dun, dun. Does 1099 count as subcontracting? Yeah, Mo, I would say yes. Because remember, the definition of a 1099, right, by by statute is what? They're an independent contractor. So you can't get, you can't say, you can't pay them as an independent contractor and try to count them as an employee. That would, that would, that, you're, you're going to either have a problem with, with the, with your contract or you're going to have a problem with IRS, whichever one you want to pick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like who you want to fight your battle with, you know, you know, but Mo, one of the things that I tell people, and this is something that people can do when we were in that situation before, and let's say, let's say I'm going to give a scenario. Let's say that you have, and I, I like landscaping, um, Ray, welcome to the party. And so I have landscaping. Let's say we have a landscaping project because landscaping falls under services. Oh, I stopped sharing. Hold on. Let me share this window. Okay. So let's say that I have a landscaping project and landscaping falls under services. So we've got to perform 50% of the contract for that services, right? So now, dun, 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 sorry guys. So in that particular scenario, what, what you would do or what we've done in the past is if you're going to hire a landscaping company to do the work, and let's say you don't you can't meet the 50% of the goal, uh, one of the things that I would encourage people is to essentially hire employees from that landscaping company onto your payroll using a payroll company, Ray, using a payroll <laughs> company. <laughs> I would say hire the landscaping company, hire their employees on your payroll, on your books, so that, that way that you meet the requirements, right? So now what happens is, uh, let's say the contract is 10000 a month. So you've got to do 5000 a month worth of that contract. So I would hire uh, enough employees underneath that contract, right, underneath my books, so that that way I'm now meeting my 50% goals and um, so the, the landscaping, it's the same landscaping company is going to do is doing the work effectively. But now the persons that are doing it for that company that would normally be in that project, they would go on your payroll instead of the landscaping company's payroll. And that's how you can meet your 50 percent objective. And so that's definitely um, ways. There's ways to get around this. And again, the big companies do this all the time. If you guys, if you're in this space long enough, you'll see people jump ship. From company to company, we've had even my podcast guests. I've had three guests of mine that have already moved from working with one organization to the next organization. So this is a very common uh, practice. So again, yes, Queen of Zion definitely. It's easy when you run a payroll company because then you don't have to worry about the stuff. Like the little extra fee that you pay to run through a payroll company will simplify your life one thousand percent. Will make it easier when it comes to doing your books. Like when you give it to your accountant with the payroll company, they're going to give you everything that you need. They're going to give you all your reports and like you'll be good to go. So again, there's ways around this. Don't feel like you're ever stuck. Um, but one of the ways that we've done in the past, is we just hire whatever company we're going to use. They're going to put, let's say they put their project manager out there and they put their best people on our job, especially if it's, you know, it's going to be, a, let's say a 12 month project. So then we say, okay, look, you're going to have 12 guys working out there on the job. We're going to put six on our payroll and then six on your payroll. And then we do the work and that's it. So that's it. Easy, you know, easy said. I hope that was an easy enough explanation. <laughs> Mo, so I just finished my lunch. I'm still at work, but I thought I would never. Hey, what's up, Mo? Cool. What's up, Dale? Korea and Joe, what's up? Uh, uh, uh. Yes, Creon, the IRS will audit you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I like said my work is getting away. Yeah, listen to it on replay. I told her boo work. Oh, no, that's okay. She got to work to pay the bills. Queen is on how to become your student. Look, I, I mean, 
<clears throat> GovCon Giants. I, I put it in there. Right oh. Very easy. By the way, we are actually. Oh, I forgot my man Ray. That's who I forgot. Okay. All right, Mo, we got, we got, I was wondering, Mo, on that Wednesday group that I sent out this morning email, there was one person, I, I, I was like, dang, Mo, I had Mo with all women. Yeah, Ray's got to, <laughs> Ray, I got to put Ray in that group with you, Mo, so it won't be you and a whole bunch of women in that Wednesday group. <laughs> Ray, I got to get, we got to get together so I can, I can, I'll share the email with Ray and include him in the group. All right, well. Like I said, we were just doing some exercises today and, um, you know, when there's a chance to share, you know, we, we're going to share. I, I should have went on yesterday when we we're doing all the numbers and I said it to Maria, I was like, man, we should, I should have went live yesterday when we we're actually doing the numbers. What's up, Josh? And, um, but yeah, I, I, we didn't do it. So we missed out on the numbers. It's. If you do Excel, it's it's easier. If you don't understand Excel, you're just like, what? Oh, are you doing? I love Excel. I'll pull it. Let me. In fact, let me see if I can pull this up for you guys. It's. Do I even have yours? Oh, I did on my laptop. Dropbox. Oh, it's on Dropbox. Yeah, I did on my laptop. That's right, Bailey, Karen, Bailey. Let them know. Ray said, I need a payroll video. You do. Yeah. Thanks, Carolyn. By the way, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Today. Today. Today's podcast. Hold on. Wait. Today. Lori. Listen. Today's podcast with Lori, artist. Lori Sales. Sales. Sales artist. I guess I was, I'm still using her maiden name. Lori's podcast. She has been the most down to earth genuine person that I've interviewed on the podcast out of all of my guests. Lori tells it like it is. Okay? <laughs> Lori say, look, I grew up in Chicago. I hustle. You know what I mean? Like, so Lori, like if, if there's a podcast that I definitely want to tell you to listen to, it's Lori. She's got a lot of gems in her podcast. She says that, you know, she's not the expert, but she hires experts. So for all of you are out there who are looking at how do you leverage your talents and your skills to get into this marketplace? Lori, the, the one that we did drop today, is it already up, Maria? Yes. Hold it, on. it came up yesterday. Did it? And the website's up right now. Hold on. Let me pull it up. I'm going to check. I'm going to check. I'm gonna I check did my job. job. I'm checking on Maria, y'all. Make sure. I did my job. Ta-da! Okay. There it is. All right. So Lori, <laughs> Lori, Chicago native, Marine, and she built a multi-million professional consulting firm. Here you go. She said, this is, a, this is a quote that Maria used. Hey, A, I'm a woman. B, I'm a minority. C, I'm a veteran. And all of her added attributes to being in a small business arena, supporting federal government because of the set-asides. And again, I've always been entrepreneurial. I've always had a hustle. I've always been busy doing something other than a nine-to-five job. I don't know what that is to have a nine-to-five job and just go home. I don't even understand that mindset. Lori is a beast. She's a beast. And literally, like, Lori did it the right way. So for all those people, again, I'm, you know, I love 8A. I think it's a wonderful program. But again, for all those, those people that um, want to jump in without having the experience, you know, I say, look, get some experience first. Don't worry. 8A is going to be there. Get a little bit of experience on your belt. Get some contracts and get some soul source stuff. You know, Jody's kicking butt. Maria's kicking butt. Moe's kicking butt. You know, I know my people on here that are kicking butt. Raise, raise me and Ray about to put a big deal together in a couple of days. So, you know, big up to that. But definitely, um, if you guys get a chance, listen to Lori. I promise you, I promise you, if you don't like it, you know, no more, Mo. You got to go. I understand. Look, uh, trust me, listen to Lori. You'll love, you will love what she's talking about. You love her message. I think it resonates from everybody. What's up, Dave? Oh, Dave, leaving his current career to take on contract and challenge. Head on. GovCon. Can't wait, Dave. Congratulations on your contract. Um, yeah, Teddy, she's, she was in your backyard. She moved out of Chicago. She's now in D.C. area. Um, yeah, so she's lit. like Lori, like this, that episode is going to be lit. I promise you. So uh, 
So we've only had one meetup so far, Alexis. Our second meetup is in Dallas in a couple of weeks. So we'll see how that goes. 29th. On the 29th. At so. the library, not the public library like Ray said. Oh, Mo, what I said about the new group was that there's a there's someone on here in the chat. Ray Kingston is in the chat. And um, there he is. He just typed a message after you, Mo. He's, I knew when I was thinking, when I would put the group together, that I was like, Mo was with all these girls. So I was like, I got to, I knew there was another guy I was thinking about, but I couldn't remember it was Ray. So, but then Ray jumped on and he popped in my brain. So I'm going to include Ray on the email, Mo, so that you, uh, there's another, there's some balance in that group. All right. So Ray's, Ray's going to be put on that, that new Wednesday group that we formed. Um, Queen of Zion, uh, actually, so for, for those who saw the video last week with the contracts, uh, with Randy Ward, um, <laughs> so with Randy Ward, Randy Ward has been yielding phone calls from people who had, who were construction companies and IT companies and stuff like that, that could service that area. So, um, we put her email in there. So if you want to reach out to Maria, Queen of Zion, send Maria an email and she can connect you with Randy. Randy's been talking to folks about the upcoming contract opportunities in Indiana, Montana, North Carolina, Arkansas, and that's the four I came off the top of my brain. So, yep. Oh, you're in Dallas? You bet. Oh, Look. oh hey, nice. I so yeah, check out, uh, check out the on Instagram, GovCon Giants. That's will show you where the events are going to be at Queen of Zion. Yeah. That's going to be there. Here. Center of the stuff for the library. Let's see. Let's see if I can beat Maria to find it. Ta da! Done. <laughs> it's not in the chat. I just did it right now. I don't yes, see it. Is. I have it on there. Your your computer's delayed. <laughs> Hold on. Ah. Uh, you got it? Yes. And somebody just gave me um, LA is next in March. All right. This is where we're going to be at in Dallas. It, it looks very. The library. It's not the uh, regular library. So. And then at like seven, there's a live band that comes on. So for anyone that wants to stay around. All right. So, yep. Good spot. Good place. So we're going to make it fun. And we're going to make it fun. One of our podcast guests is going to be there. So. Um, uh, it should be cool. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. Good stuff. Looking forward to it. In fact, actually, my buddy, uh, called me this morning. Some of you have been reaching out to my friend Paul on LinkedIn, which is cool. And he called me and asked me about, uh, showing, but they're going to be out of the country during that time. So, Ooh, Maria, it's not showing up on LinkedIn. And I mean, not showing up on, in a link on YouTube. She said on YouTube, but you go, why you didn't put it on YouTube? It is on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. It's about to be on there now. It's done. I still came up before you. I don't see it. You're right. On, on, but you, oh, I put the word Eventbrite tickets. Oh, that's fine. I still didn't see that either. It's twice. Maybe it's blocking you. <laughs> oh, because you're admin and. Yeah. Right, let me find it. Guys, you have to hit like down there. Tell your people to like the, the thingy. What thing? The video thing, because of your analytics stuff. Oh. D look, Dallas, Texas, meet and greet, event bright. I'm pulling it up, and then we're going to sign off. It's govcongiantsdallas.eventbrite.com. So every meet and greet is going to be GovCon Giants, the city dot eventbrite dot com. Coming up. LA is next. Somebody told me there's a very cool observatory up, up in LA that overlooks the zoo. So I'm going to call them. Okay, there it is. All right, Eventbrite has been posted for everyone to see. All right. Yep. Mo, we are doing SBRs. We got a bunch of people doing SBRs. Mo, bunch. We are doing SBRs. That's why we got to jump in on um, the Wednesday groups. So we actually have more people than we need right now. But so 
fun stuff. All right, guys. I'm going to, you know, we, that's basically what we were talking about. Just going through numbers and sharing with everybody out here. So we're going to sign off. Bye, guys. Unless Maria needs something else. <laughs> I always do, but you know, so not right now. We're going to sign off for everybody. All right. Make sure to like this video. Thank you. So like it, share it. Oh, by the way, wait, 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 wait. Before I go, I forgot something. <laughs> I set up, I just recently set up a LinkedIn for GovCon Giants. Hold on. I'm going to put it in there. I don't know how to find it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right. So we have, uh, before you guys go, I just created a, a GovCon Giants community group inside of LinkedIn. So for all those people who have LinkedIn, we have a new GovCon Giants community group that we just created. So, all right. So make sure uh, you hit me up in the box. We are starting a new community group on LinkedIn, and we are going to be doing something similar to what we do with the references, right? So the same thing that we do with the actual supplier credit references, we'll be doing the same things in LinkedIn. So again, uh, make sure you hit that up as well, because I can see leveraging the same way we do supplier credit and referencing, giving each other references, we could do the same thing on LinkedIn. So uh, again, I'm thinking of ways in which we can leverage our network and leverage our combined efforts and resources to be able to take each other to the next level. And so we're already doing that with a lot of people in the group. And I want to invite more people into the community as well. So again, if you're on LinkedIn, by the way, if you're not on LinkedIn, that's a problem. So if you're not on LinkedIn and you're trying to get into the government space, then you probably want to create yourself a LinkedIn profile if you haven't already done so. Um, I don't teach LinkedIn, but it's pretty easy. It's like a, it's just a social media network for business professionals. Um, so again, if you're not on LinkedIn, you should definitely get a LinkedIn profile. If you're on LinkedIn, um, send me a message for that community group on LinkedIn that we have and join because again, we're going to be doing some good stuff as always. And we're going to be taking this to the next phase, the next evolution of GovCon Giants, right? We're going to be taking that up to LinkedIn. So again, any other questions, information, you know where to find us, you know how to reach us. Maria is almost always accessible, except when she's busy working. <laughs> and we're, we're looking at, we're, by the way, we're going to look to find her some help. So I'm trying to get Maria some help um, because we are growing like crazy and we can support definitely some more people. <laughs> yes. Like the video, 32 people watching it. Make sure you guys all hit the like button, uh, as well. And for those of you, Oh, by the way, Teddy, I do want to apologize. The other day we had a, I had a fumble, right? I, I, I you know, I fumbled the ball. So the other day, um, so we actually, oh, there you go. So someone is building a curriculum for, no. for college on how to use LinkedIn. So that would be great. That's, that's awesome. Someone is actually working on that in our group and happens to be someone that I'm, we know about. Uh, but nevertheless, what happened the other day was that I, um, I tell you guys, it's an experiment. So when I was actually on the other day, I took an, um, I set up the notifications like for uh, YouTube live and I scheduled it. But then when I went on zoom with Linda, the zoom did not pull from that same pre-scheduled time. So there were people sitting, waiting for me on that pre-scheduled uh, Friday evening chat that didn't get the notification that we were in another zoom room. I guess zoom doesn't talk to YouTube in that manner. So I do apologize for that, for those people that were waiting for me over there. We did end up making a video with Linda. It was a great video, uh, Facts and Fictions of the 8A program. She <laughs> shared in her experiences and stuff. So I do apologize for that. We, um, again, I'm, I'm learning how to connect all these different software platforms, applications. I don't think there's a, even a universal standard right now. So, you know, I use OBS when I'm, I'm making my own videos. When I'm interviewing guests, I use Zoom. Uh, and so, like, I think they're just not talking. But I do apologize for that. 
Um, and then we'll, Mo, you know, obviously we'll be in the regular meetings together. So we will be able to talk more about your LinkedIn uh, course that you're creating that we can uh, maybe uh, see how we can tie that into some of the people who need uh, advice on how to use LinkedIn because LinkedIn for all of you that is, um, you're coming into the space and you have not used it, even if you're not looking for a job, this is where all the professionals hang out at. So all the professionals are going to be are hanging out there and it's a way to make connections. I know of certain people in a group who've leveraged it already successfully. So um, that's great. Oh, what's up, Johnny? Welcome. Oh, Marie, I didn't hey. have LinkedIn before, Eric, and he kept nagging at me. Get LinkedIn. I'm like, what is that? What is that? And funny enough, I started getting LinkedIn when we started our getting our podcast. So some of our guests do come from me making those connections on LinkedIn. And Absolutely. that's where I find and search for them. I use the search words like 8A as the award winner. And that's how I, I get connected to them and take it on from there. So And I think I, I think Mo uh, and some other people I know of, like particularly, they've reached out some of our podcast guests via LinkedIn and they've been able to set up you know, one-on-one calls with them, some of our guests in the past. So again, you know, we have, and I, and I keep saying this, we've had some really good podcast guests on that, you know, they've covered pretty much all facets of business and industry at, to this point. So, you know, when people ask me specific questions about you know, IT or things like that, like there are guests that are staffing firms, there are guests that are consulting firms, there are guests that are construction firms, there's guests that are IT firms. We've had guests that cover all facets of business. And so, again, um, you know, that's why I do this, right? So that you don't always have to turn to me directly like Eric Coffee as the resource. I put all of these resources on the table for all of you to have free of charge so that you can, um, whenever you need something, hopefully we will have that area covered. And even if you if we don't have the area covered, if you go to our website, you click the little box, you can actually leave a question right there on the box so that we could cover that in future episodes. So, um, oh, look, there you go. Mo just said, D saved us 10K after speaking with her. So look, and in fact, someone in our group, literally I asked, they, they asked about the, um, so D, he's talking about D Kibbit. And someone asked me about some type of um, certification that D did. And I said, why are you not, why are you asking the group when we have an expert that's already connected to GovCon Giants that you can tap into. So again, you know, they, there are people out there that are, uh, that we've, that we've brought into our community, into our circle that respect us and know <clears throat> that we are out here doing good work that really want to give back. And so again, just by saying, Hey, there you go. AS9100. Thank you, Mo. Just by uh, reaching out to them and saying, Hey, I heard you on the GovCon Giants podcast you know, I had some questions. Most of the time, those people are, are they're, they're responding back. So again, I have seen that more times than not. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Uh, what's up, Tracy Hill? Nah, man. Thank you, brother. I'm, you know, I'm putting in the work, man. I'm, I'm grinding. I'm just, you know, the only difference between now and before is I'm just sharing more of what I'm doing as I do it. So uh, we're, we're doing some really good stuff on our end. So, but yeah, absolutely. Hey, listen, thank you guys. Thanks for all that jumped on. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully that you guys, you missed, you didn't miss the beginning of the conversation. We were just going through some numbers with Maria. She won a couple of sole source contracts and she was wondering how do we, uh, we're getting ready to put together the subcontract agreement. And now is where the rubber meets the road, right? So we've got the contracts. Now we're, we're figuring out the money side of it. And I want to share in the beginning what we were looking at in terms of how do you determine the actual amount of the work that has to go to the prime versus the subcontractors and how do you stay compliant with the FARs uh, federal regulations. And so that's kind of the beginning of the video and what we talked about. So for all of those coming on now, that's what you missed in the very beginning. And so again, go back and watch that if you are in that particular situation. But again, as always, we will be sharing more and more content more frequently and we will be uh, putting a team around Maria call yes. Marie Mac, please. She just put yes. up a message, you know, man, why you keep uh, Marie Mac keep sweating like that? Call her. <laughs> hey, Michael Madison. No problem, man. This is, that's, that's what we're here for. All right. So, yep. I do have a passion for this. As you guys can see, 
I stopped beating on tables because people told me I was beating on tables because loud. But um, we do have, like I said, we've got some stuff going on. It's ringing, uh, but it's not her. Okay. All right. Well, all right. Well, listen, I've got some things to do and um, I got to grab some grub. So thank you guys so much. Be good. Take care. Bye, guys. Enjoy your week.